All right, I think we can start now. We have more people on the call. Hello, everyone. My name is Blessing Ojubeli, project manager here at Secure Intelligence Limited. I'd like to welcome everyone to our webinar today on AWS Systems Manager. We're so excited to have you join us today. It's going to be an amazing learning experience for all of us. Before we go further, it's important we do some housekeeping rules, especially to those who are joining us for the first time and those who are not familiar with ZOO. This session is being recorded and will be uploaded on our social media platforms. We want you to be able to go over this session as many times as you please. Attendees can raise their hands or react during the presentations. Other engagement required from the attendees is at the discretion of the presenter. If you have a question, kindly use the Q&A or comment session and we'll attend to them at the end. We hope this session is going to be an interactive one. We want to see your comments. We'd love to hear from you. We want to see your reactions. So please feel free to drop your questions in the Q&A section. If you look below your screen, you see a question mark icon. So you can drop your questions there. And you also see an emoji icon. So we want to see your reactions, show that you're excited to learn and to hear from us. Um, before we get into the business of today, we'd like to introduce ourselves to you, especially to those who are joining us for the first time. It's important that you are acquainted with us. As your host, we want you to know who we are and what we do. So SEAL teams are solution builders. We build modern digital products using experienced, highly skilled and affordable product development teams. We exist to help innovators build digital products using guaranteed engagement models. Now we're going to get right into the agenda for today. So today we're looking at the challenge. So we have identified a problem and we're looking for ways to solve this problem. So after looking at the challenge, we will look at the solution, which is the solutions we have outlined in this entire program. So we're also going to be looking at the patch management, which is part of the AWS Systems Manager. And we'll look at architecture and demo. So today, we're not just here to tell you what Systems Manager is about, or how to automate patch management. We're here to also show you how to use it. To continue with the rest of the program, I'll be bringing in John Toriola. John is our distinguished cloud engineer here at Secure Intelligence Limited, and he'll be taking us through what to expect for the rest of the program. John. Your mic is muted. I don't think we can hear you clearly. Hello, John, we still cannot hear you. Probably you should um, remove your earpiece or anything if you are plugged. That could be... Okay. We still cannot hear you, John. We can't. We can't hear you. Do you want to uh, probably go out and join again? Just a minute. I apologize for the slight network issues and sound issues. Um, all right, whilst we wait for John to sort out his network, we'll go over the housekeeping rules again because I think we have more people who have joined us. So it's important they know what to expect for the program. Um, this session is being recorded and will be uploaded on our social media platforms. Attendees can raise hands or react during the presentations. So please, we want to see your reactions. We want to see your comments. Drop them in the Q&A or comment session, and we promise to attend to them at the end. 
Okay. And we Hello. generally this session is going to be an interactive one. So please pay attention so you can ask questions. So you can have questions to ask at the end. I think John is back. So he's going to take us through the rest of the program. Oh, okay. Can can everyone hear me now? Yeah, loud yes. and Oh, good. Okay, thank you, blessing. Thanks. I'm very sorry, everyone, for uh, the short uh, network issue. Now, okay, I was actually explaining that there, there is there is an issue, a challenge that organize organizations face at the moment, and that challenge is the challenge of managing servers. Like at, at the moment, there are about probably fifty percent of uh, workloads still on on premise. Like they are still being operated by by uh, companies in by themselves now the issue is the, the trend is that now th these servers that are on-prem are actually moving to the cloud but the, but there's there's a consensus i think it, there, there's this level ground like most companies are actually settling for hybrid cloud you get so now what 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 the issue actually what, what that actually uh causes is that now your systems and the administrator will have to be quite versatile in their knowledge of the web uh, the cloud and and uh, systems tools. Now, so now you, you are trying to manage uh, as as a big organization. You are trying to manage thousands of servers. Sometimes, let, let, let's say from hundreds to thousands. And so most most of these servers, some are on prem, some are on the cloud, some are probably in they are in different regions. And some of these servers also operate different OS. Like and you are trying to get the best management at the same time with the best optimal security. So this this challenge is actually quite daring, and you you need a way to be able to solve it in a in a seamless way. Now, uh, most companies actually go for probably a a way to solve it by employing more systems administrator. Now that works, but that's not scalable because okay, let's assume you you you, you are just opening up a, a site in let's say island now that means you have to get a system administrator in island that will help you manage the on-prem servers now that 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 works but when scale comes in it becomes it, it's it's not a very good idea it's not scalable now what are we proposing is there a better way to do this than instead of trying to manage uh servers with increasing uh, systems administrator and and the likes no there's a better way there's actually a better way of doing this. Now, let me quickly introduce you to an AWS service called uh, AWS Systems Manager. Now, that's what we want to talk about for today. Now, Systems Manager does quite a lot of things. It's one of the most robust service AWS has to offer. Can everyone still hear me? Yeah, sure, sure. Oh, okay. That means we're good. Now, now AWS Systems Manager. Systems, I said earlier that Systems Manager does a whole lot of things. And another thing we, we take into uh into uh companies at here in at secure is we are very very careful of the security of your workload so your server we want them secure now systems manager does a lot of things uh one of which is uh, these are they are all listed down there now one of which which is a uh, session manager what is session manager a uh, session manager is a way to securely uh access your your servers without using keepers like you know, as probably you are, you, are, you are a developer in your organization and you want to SSH into your, your servers. You know, one of the things you, you that is required is keep it. Now, session manager does that without the need of keep it. Now, another service that is quite good that systems manager has also is uh, patch manager. Now, we'll, we'll get back to patch manager, but let me quickly talk about uh, parameter store. Now you have parameter store is a way to store your parameters, like secret parameters, things like uh, your database uh, credentials, your 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 uh, company secrets, like things like that. You want to store them on the web. You can use parameter store. One other very good uh, thing, Systems Manager as one service it has also is run command. You can remotely run commands on your servers from anywhere at any time. So system, now those are just a few, like I just mentioned if you had elaborated on them a bit. Now there are several other things system manager does. Now, but, but for today, what we want to actually discuss about, like the service that system manager offers, I want to actually talk more about is patch manager. Now, 
Bank manager is a way like the challenge we, we, we laid down earlier. You get that you have servers in probably different uh cloud providers with different cloud providers. You have servers on AWS, you have servers on on-prem, you have some on GCP and the likes. You get, but you are looking for a way to seamlessly manage the servers, manage in the sense that you want to be able to update those servers and be able to get feedback on a dashboard you know this, this is why i said like the other approach of bringing in new uh administrator is not scalable this is quite scalable because you can go as much as thousands of server and you will be managing all the servers from a single dashboard now you you, you, are, you, you agree with me that's actually quite beautiful now to to elaborate more on this and give us a demo on this on our patch manager work i will be i'll bring in my friend uh and a colleague uh cousin madini and he will take us through the whole demo and just just listen and you you really enjoy the the whole thing uh cousin you can come in all right um thank you very much john and blessing for the introduction i'm very grateful uh, you can call john jt you know, for short, like Blessing said, our distinguished um, colleague. Um, Caleb, can you please go to the back before, can you go one step? Okay, good. So John has almost said it all, but what we are here to talk about is patch management. Now, system manager does a whole lot of things, like he said, and um, we can see that you can manage multiple servers in multiple locations from just one central dashboard. And that is what we are trying to preach here. But why patch management? Patch management talks about, um, deals with the fact that when you want to, when there's going to be a data breach, one of the high causes of that is usually due to the fact that the OS or your applications are not being patched early enough. So it makes your, application or your OS to be vulnerable to attacks. So due to this fact now, you might see a data breach that you are not supposed to be seeing. So for this um, patch manual, like he said, I'm going to be showing you a demo, but I'd like to run through the steps. So one of the first thing you do is you scan for the vulnerability, right? So after scanning for your vulnerability, you classify them. You also prioritize in, so in a level that um, you are talking about how critical they are to your business workloads. So now, prioritizing is one aspect that um, I don't want to really dwell on now. And also, we'll be talking about how to now patch that. So what we want to do is, I'm going to show you the demo so that you can understand this a bit more. I'm going to start by, uh, Caleb will stop sharing his own screen while I start sharing mine now. So blessing, please let me know when you can see my screen. Okay. Uh, okay. Coming. Okay. Can you see my screen? Okay. Yes, okay. I can see your screen now. What I see now. Um, console home. Okay, thank you very much for that. So the very first thing I'm going to show you here is to go to um, systems manager. Um, let me click on it from here. Okay, so for you to be able to manage any instance at all, you need to have your SSM agent installed on these servers. So once you have that installed, you can go to fleet manager here so every server that you have um that you installed the ssm agent on it you'll be able to see them here right here so in this you can see it's saying manage nodes so nodes represents a server now here we have multiple servers as you can see that we are managing from here we have linux we have windows and other ones and the likes like that. So seeing this now, we you are managing um, servers from GCP, from Azure, 
just from this one dashboard. But I'd like to show you how to do that right now. So the very first thing we want to do is go to our run command. Okay, so run command allows you to specify the action that it should take um, when you want to patch. So it's going to utilize a document and that document is like the automation document. Run command is the one giving it the power to run that document. So we could just pick um, apply patch baseline. That means we want to just, you know, so a baseline are like set of rules that you already defined. So those rules are like, okay, saying, um, do you want um, critical updates? Uh, what time do you want this thing to work and stuff like that? So we we'll just click on this patch baseline. So you have predefined rules and you can also have custom baselines. So we're going with this predefined one for now because you don't want to waste much of your time. So I'm going to also show you. Um, so it's asking what kind of operation. So we could click scan. Um, so you specify instance tags manually or resource groups. So now when we create our instances, one thing we do is to attach um, attach them to a tag. So you can attach it to a patch group. Now, the reason for doing this is simple. You want to group them like we have said in the previous um, slide that I showed you. You want to group them into, um, yeah, you want to group them into one whereby you can know um, the particular use cases. For instance, you want to group Windows servers differently. You want to group Linux servers differently. You want to group CentOS servers differently. So you do this. Um, when you're creating your instance, you make sure that you already have the patch group and the tags associated with it. So the very first thing you do here now is we specify this patch group. So this patch group is case sensitive. If I put the lower case for the G, it's not going to work. So I'm going to click on Windows servers now. So I'm going to add that. Okay, um, so if you want to put in your comments, um, rate control, if you want um, what you are just doing to go to like a central S3 bucket that you've deployed, um, a CloudWatch alarm, you can also trigger it using a CloudWatch um, event rule, and you can also automate it using the Lambda function. So, sorry, I would like to take this off now. Okay, so I'll click on, run okay so you can already see that this is in progress so all the servers that are currently grouped with windows servers are going to be um scanned we only clicked on scanning now we didn't tell it to probably install the patches so i like to reload my screen so you can see it means we have is there 25 targets? So it means we have like 25 instances currently that are windows and that have um, been attached or associated with the patch group called Windows servers. So you can see some of these ones are already successful. So I'm going to click on it just so we check, uh, saying that we do not have any error. Now, the other thing we can also check here is how compliant they are, like what you've installed so far. So you can see we have 91 compliant um, resources. We have 26 that has been patched, and you have two non-compliant ones. So if you have issues like this, definitely you can check with this. Now, you already know the ones that are not compliant, and you can install what is missing there, if you get what I'm saying. Um, so this is like a brief overview of everything. Now, imagine you now have, you're managing from one central account. We have an administrator account that we're currently using. What if you deploy in multiple, maybe AWS accounts and you have other ones there as well? Now that is where Athena comes in whereby it allows you to query 
multiple accounts. Now the Athena, the way it works is this. We have a glue catalog that would have cataloged uh, most of our metadata from our S3 buckets. So each time we run like a command, the, it goes into the S3 bucket that we created. I'm going to show you the architecture after this demo. So it goes into there, then the glue catalogs it and creates a table that comes into this Athena here. So you can use your SQL to now query. So if you check this, you have different tables here. And um, if I run this now to see maybe the non-compliance, um, non-compliant um, servers. So you see that I have multiple ones here now because I have some servers that are also in another account. So you can have a general overview here from Athena, and also you can um, you can visualize this using. Um, you can visualize it on AWS as well. So you could also check the ones that have probably the um, SSM agent installed. You'll see that also running beneath here, and you see the um, version. You can check the name, the ID. Um, you can check the account. So if you have been in other accounts, so the accounts will also come up here. So I think with this few points of mine, I'd like to take questions now and um, stop sharing my screen. If Caleb can share the material again so that we can go into the architecture, then I hand over the button to Blessing. All right, Caleb. Um, thank you. Can you please scroll to? Okay. Um. Yeah. Just go to the architecture. Yeah, keep going. All right, cool. So this is what we have deployed. We have used this. We have, you don't have to think about this too much, basically. Just trying to show us that we have uh, the left side is the account, the administrative account that we used to deploy, deploy into different um, target accounts. So you need like an automation role and an um, automation execution role and an administrative role. So the administrative role calls the automation execution role, and you have um, anything you do in those accounts come to the um, data sync bucket, and everything from that goes straight to the Amazon central bucket. So you have you can manage your on-prem servers from here, as you can see beneath. You can also manage multi-clouds from just one AWS account. So thank you very much. I'd like to hand over to Blessing. If you have questions, I'd like to take them now before we give you the takeaways. Over to you, Blessing. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Kazem. That was an insightful session. And I cannot wait to start freely utilizing the AWS Systems Manager and automating patch management. I've learned a few things today and i know we have other people on the call who have learned a few things and they cannot wait to start practicing um so like cousin said now is the time for us to take questions so if you have questions kindly drop them in the q and a section just look below your screen you see a question mark emoji so once you tap on it you can type in your questions but before we go over the questions, I'd like to see your reactions and, and show some excitement if you are happy that you've learned something today. At least to cheer up our leaders, our speakers rather. <laughs> to cheer up our speakers. So just, you know, react, say something, do something, just so we're sure that you're here with us. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, so I'm still waiting for your questions, for your questions. Please go to the Q&A and drop a question with contribution and i'll just go over them so um, as you can see on this current slide we have um takeaways for you um the starter pack here allows you to um there's a link here that 
you can use to deploy all the resources that we have done here. It gives you the full explanation. It's a repo from AWS. It gives you a full explanation on how to deploy all these resources. Um, you also have our website. You can visit our website to see or know more about us. We also have SEAL Academy for you guys, for people that want to learn. We currently have an internship um, going on now where we teach people or train students on how to have all these specialized skills. Okay, um, Blessing, I think there's a question. You might want to read that. Great, thank you. Um, so I'll be directing this question at um, Cousin. What's the level of expertise required to operate this service? Okay, um, thank you very much, Blessing. Uh, System Manager is not uh, maybe for just any kind of person. There's a level, let me just say intermediate um, level of expertise. But when, you, when it comes to managing multiple servers, you need someone that is very good and very, very um, skilled to understand. So I would say that you don't want to give just any kind of person. You don't want to make um, a systems administrator that doesn't really know much about it to do that. So if you are looking for experts, definitely you need AWS partners like us that can, you know, do this for you seamlessly. All right. So All right, I hope that you. answers your question, um, Adejuma. Okay. I would like to see your comments, Adijo. If you answered your question, you can just respond still in the Q&A. Okay. All right. Thank you very right. much. Thank, Thank you very you. much. We still have room to take more questions. So you can drop your questions and we'll have them answered. Still reiterating on what um, Kazim has said, you can get in touch with us by visiting the secureintel.com website. We'd love to hear from you. Like he stated already, we currently have learning programs for you. So we have programs where you can come learn more about things like this. Again, we'd love to hear from you. So make sure you get in touch. Make sure you, you visit our website and you see what we have going on there. All right. Um, since we do not have more questions, Going to bring today's session to a close. Thank you so much for joining today. We hope to see you next time we have an AWS Systems Manager webinar. Thank you very much.